Hello, Dan Harvey for Boris Effects here with a look at the new Sapphire 11 Sparks toolset for Autodesk Flame. The big news for Sapphire 11 is the integration of the Academy Award winning Mocha toolset, bringing best of class planar tracking, roto and masking tools to the Flame desktop, timeline and batch. In this first example I'll add a spark node in batch, apply the Sapphire glint effect, load a preset from the browser and tweak the settings until I achieve the required look. I'd like to limit the effect to a region of interest, so I'll open the crop settings and launch Mocha. The Mocha UI opens in a floating window. I'll plot an X-spline shape around my region of interest and track it using Mocha's integrated planar tracker, stopping where required to animate the roto on my shape. When I'm satisfied with my animated shape, I'll save the Mocha project and return to the Glint menu in Batch where I can tweak the overall feathering and opacity of my Mocha mask. I'll scrub in the Batch timeline to preview the result. The integrated Mocha functionality may be found in the crop settings of all Sapphire Sparks where appropriate. A few exceptions being sparks which require some other type of matte input, such as Zblur in this example which requires a depth matte input. The power of Mocha is particularly evident when working with multiple masks. I've applied the Sapphire Beauty effect here to smooth the flesh tone on the talent, but I want to restrict it just to the face. The challenge here lies in obtaining a useful track despite the occlusion issue caused by the candle in the foreground. I'll plot the initial shape before my first attempt at tracking, which fails on account of the occlusion. In Mocha I can animate, track and combine an unlimited number of shape layers, and it's important to note that shapes at the top of the layer stack in Mocha are treated as being closer to the camera, and therefore exclude any picture content in lower layers from being analysed by the tracker. I can also determine how the various shape layers interact. I'll set the candle layer to hold out the face layer. As you can see, this makes dealing with occlusions easy. Another useful feature of Mocha is the ability to create nested shapes which share the same tracking data. I'll add some additional shapes on the face layer to hold out the eyes and the mouth. I'm happy with the shape, so I'll save the Mocha project and return to Batch, and the beauty effect is applied to the region of interest defined by the Mocha shape composition. If I want to use my Mocha mask to hold back a spark by another vendor, or one of Flame's native effects, there are a couple of ways to achieve this in Sapphire. I plan to use the mask for the beauty effect to hold back Flame's regrain effect, so I'll return to Mocha, select the shapes I want to use, and export them as Flame G masks. Next I'll go to a G mask node in my batch tree, load in my exported Mocha shapes, and tweak them as required, feeding the result into the matte input of my regrain node. Another approach is to use the dedicated Sapphire Mocha Spark, which acts like a G-mask node in batch, feeding the matte into the composition. In this example I've masked the hand here as it swipes across the tablet by means of a combination of roto animation and tracking in Mocha. I've tracked another shape to hold out the tablet screen and I'll set the hand shape to subtract from it in order to deal with the occlusion. When I display the surface and perspective grid overlays I can visualise the planar track that I've measured for the screen. I'd like to use that in action to move the foreground layer I'll be inserting into the tablet screen, so I'll export my tracking data to Flame. In Batch we can see how the input from the Mocha node behaves like a G-mask, feeding the matte input for the background clip layer and action, which is currently composited over black. In the Action Schematic view I'll add an image surface for my foreground layer, and change the surface type to Bilinear so that I can corner pin it. I'll enter the Stabilizer in the Vertices submenu, and load in the tracking data I exported from the Mocha Spark. Now I'll set the foreground layer priority, and my foreground clip follows the Mocha track while the screen area and hand are held out by the Mocha mask. Thanks for watching. 
In this session we've merely scratched the surface of the creative potential of Sapphire 11 with Mocha. For more detail, check out the Sapphire and Mocha tutorials on borisfx.com.